Okay guys, this is uh, the newest update on Tropical Storm Lan, which is supposed to intensify into a super typhoon and threaten Okinawa, Japan this weekend. I'm going to pull up the, the forecast track and it says uh, the track has ended at uh, the 22nd. Doesn't mean it's the storm's going to end, that's just as far forward as they can forecast. But by the 22nd or 21st, definitely probably later in the day on the 21st, it will be affecting parts of Japan. The wind field will be close enough that it will be affecting it. And this is just some of the information that I've gotten from uh, Underground Weather. If you want to go to that website, I'll try to leave a link in the description so you can read the full report yourself. Here it says, Tropical Storm Land currently east of the Philippines is about to rapidly intensify into potentially a super typhoon and could eventually pose a threat to Okinawa and mainland Japan this weekend. Land is over 400 miles east of the Philippines to the northwest of Palau and is moving slowly north. Thunderstorm clusters near land center are in the process of coalescing near the center of circulation. Upper level winds are favorable for development featuring prominent outflow channels both to the northeast and southwest. Typically ample ocean heat content is also in play. Therefore land won't simply intensify into a typhoon but is expected to rapidly intensify into a super typhoon. With maximum sustained winds of at least 150 miles per hour in the, in the next few days according to the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast. Land will track generally toward the north before beginning a northeast turn due to the steering effects of high pressure to its east and the increasing influence of the jet stream as it gains latitude this weekend. Land is not expected to pose a threat to the Philippines, Taiwan, or eastern China, but by this weekend may pass close to o Okinawa and mainland Japan. And the outlook for Okinawa is this. And it remains too f uh, far too soon to determine what impacts land may have in Okinawa, including Kadena Air Base. It seems likely land will be a formidable or formidably strong typhoon by the time it reaches the latitude of Okinawa this weekend. However, land's exact path, specifically when, uh, when and how sharply it turns toward the northeast, will hold keys to the degree of impact there. A sharper, sooner northeast turn would lessen the threat. A later, less sharp turn would increase the threat of an eye wall strike. Despite this, land may have a large wind field, so even if Okinawa avoids the eye wall, tropical storm force winds along the, with heavy rain and pounding surf are possible impacts this weekend. For now, all interests in Okinawa should monitor closely the progress of land. Interestingly, despite the western Pacific basins deserve reputation as the, the most active tropical cyclone corridor on Earth, intense typhoons near Okinawa aren't as frequent as one might, may think. According to NOAA's Best Track Database, only seven Category 4 or stronger equivalent typhoons have tracked within 75 miles of Kadena Air Base and reliable records dating to 1971. The last to do so was Danis just over four years ago in early October 2013. The outlook for Japan mainland is this. The sharpness of the northeast turn will also determine how much impact Japan experiences from land early next week. Again, the sharper the northeast curl, the less danger for Honshu and Shikoku and Kyushu. A later or less sharp northeast turn would allow land's large wind field to rake across much of these areas. Land should lose some of its intensity by the time it makes its nearest pass to Japan early next week, but could still be a typhoon capable of damaging winds, power outages, locally heavy rain, flash flooding, mudslides, and coastal flooding. For now, potential peak impact in these areas of Japan appears to be somewhat from late Sunday into Monday. Forecast for Tokyo and Osaka. While the Atlantic Basin has been one of its most 
active hurricane seasons on record, the West Paci- or Western Pacific Basin, prior to land, had been in a relative slumber. Through October 16th, roughly only half of the average activity, number, intensity, longevity of tropical cyclones had occurred in, in the year to date in the Western Pacific Basin, according to data compiled by Dr. Phil Klopsbach tropical scientist at Colorado State University. This included only one super typhoon, Noru, in late July. Check back with us at theweather.com for the latest on the potential typhoon threat. So yeah, if you want to go over to the Weather Underground or the uh, weather.com, go ahead and check that out. I'm going to leave the link in the description for the Weather Underground because there are more stories here. Um, one is... a. Uh, $15 billion disasters have impacted the U.S. this year. 2017 tied for second most of all time. So that's a, an interesting story to read. The $15 billion of damage just alone from natural disasters or so-called natural disasters in the year 2017. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, read the story, go to the link in the description to weatherunderground.com. And it, right now, it is in the top section of recent stories. So, that is what you need to be looking out for this weekend. And those of you in Japan, I'm going to uh, leave my transcription in the description. And I'm going to translate it into most of the languages in that area that will be affected. So, yeah, it's something to look out for. And if you're new to the channel, you haven't liked or you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload new content or whenever I go live. And if you are a subscriber, thank you because in the first two months of this weather channel, Tracking Weather, I am up to 121 subscribers. I think at the end of last month, I was at 86 subscribers. And, and just this next month alone, I've gained up to 121 so keep watching my videos and if you haven't checked out the strange weather month episodes go ahead i'm going to try to leave a link in the description or a card at the top right of the screen you can click the three dots and pull it up there's two episodes um one is a bbc special on a uh, weirdest weather on earth and i think it's a 20 or 30 minute documentary about Different things like um, raining spiders, um, crazy coastal areas that have been totally flash frozen during storms. Uh, there's some stories about uh, giant hailstorms, um, steam devils, which are just uh, looks like a vortex of of steam that are usually found near volcanic vents near coastal areas. And yeah, uh, there's thinking there's another one. It's on the Haboob, which is a sand slash dust storm in arid regions, and they they are potentially life threatening if you don't know how to combat them or protect yourself because dust in the air is very hard to get rid of. They that was one of the main problems during the Dust Bowl uh, era when. Total farms, uh, they wouldn't use the correct uh, plowing or irrigation techniques, and eventually the fields started to erode, and that created all of the dust that was needed for the giant dust storms in that area. So that's a good episode to check out. There, there, it's a video mainly. I think the video was titled "Protecting People from Sand Slash Dust Storms." So it's telling you how you can uh, protect yourself in these areas so yeah if you haven't checked those out go ahead and check them out now and stay updated